morning everyone hope you're doing very well today is our second video in a series on the rigid heddle loom last episode we built it together which took quite some doing and today i am hoping to warp the loom for the first time and weave a scarf which is eye wateringly bright i've got some lovely colors that i hand dyed myself oh, let me let me get them yes see Look at the glory that will make your eyes bleed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited. They're all the same wool from Spotlight, so I thought might as well use them up together because they've just been languishing and they're pretty, so eh. But now we got some nice ones. That was beetroot extract and it's really hot pink. That was a surprisingly good attempt at food coloring. That was good. And then we've got some Himalayan rhubarb, which is a lovely gold. So I'm very pleased to be using those today. But yeah, first we've got to clamp the loom down, so I'll move the yarn. And we've got many, many steps here. I went through the booklet last night and made notes, so I've got many, many notes. Which is okay. And yeah, we'll go through it together and see what we can come up with today. First I've got to clamp it. We did the clamps last time, so that's fine. Um, what does it say? I have to reread this. No, that's okay. We got the pictures again. All right. Typically for this, you'd use a very long table, like it's your dining table, and you'd clamp the loom at one end, and then the warping peg at the other, which is this tubular object, and that's the way you would warp it. That's how long it would be. But I've got this table in one corner and another table in another corner, and the idea is that you clamp the warping peg to the opposite side of the table which is currently pressed against the wall so that's not gonna work it's far too much trouble to get it out there's stuff all under it there's stuff on top of it that's not what we're doing so what we're doing instead is taking a page out of Stephanie Pearl McPhee's book in her blog post in 2013 and just using the entire back of a chair as our warping peg which worked very well. She was very excited to find it, and I'll link that down below later. So, but it's a revolutionary idea, so that's what I'm doing today. It also means the scarf will have extra length because the width of the back of the chair will provide extra length to the scarf warp, so it's like win win. Okay, now, right, we've got our table and we've got the chair, so we're all good there. Insert the clamp into the hole in the back rail. And clamp it to the table. Okay, cool. That we can do. Oh, before we do though, I figured out the problem with putting in our heddle, which actually isn't a heddle. I was incorrect, sadly. This entire thing is called the reed, which is fair enough. There's another one in, um, like your typical four shaft table loom. It has the comb like protrusions without the holes and the holes are what are called the heddles so that's cool to know but I mean it's both the reed which is the up and downy bits and then the heddles which are the holes so reed heddle heddle reed <laughs> in the booklet they just call it the reed so I was completely you know calling it the wrong thing last video but eh, what can you do we figured it out however um I had to read ahead but you take your loom and you see the lovely carved bits and this is where, because it's got two sides because you can fit two reeds in, so that's cool. But that's the up position, so you rest it both sides there. That's neutral, and probably down here on the table level is the down position. And that's the way you move it up and down to create the shed, which is how you weave. So that's good to know, but I mean, frankly, it looks more like a cactus than anything else. And if you don't know what you're doing, I mean, I was lost, so... Some... Alright, so we got the back, we got the front, we've got our clamp. I have to go through and see. Okay, so metal bit goes up, block of wood goes under the table, and then you screw it. Alright. So we go through the hole. Okay. We've got our washer. Is it quite in position? Okay. 
Okay, you're going up, but you're not really doing much. Oh, I clamped it wrong, I think. <laughs> There's a longer block of wood there for a reason. All right, I got it wrong. I need to turn her around so that's underneath the table, but that makes more sense. Come on, go through the hole. Ah, that's better. That way there's more leverage. All right, clamp that nice and tight. That way it's not going anywhere. It's over the back, the edge of the table. That's where it's supposed to be in the photos so that's all good okay next step clamp the warping peg to the other end of the table well i mean we already know we're using chair as warping peg so we're fine there all right engage the front and back poles into the teeth of the cogs i thought they were engaged to be frank also on another note you know the cog covers oh plug down i can't turn it but these bitty boos I forgot to hit them with the rubber mallet, so I did it this morning. <sighs> if you're going to build one of these by yourself, I highly recommend you give it a few good whacks with the rubber mallet, because hitting it with the palm of your hand isn't going to do anything. So I had to do that, but I did put a cloth over it so it wouldn't mark it or damage it, and um, gave a few hard bashes, and we're in, so woohoo. Alright, let's see, are the poles engaged? Yes. They're definitely engaged, so we're good. I'm not sure where the warping bar things are supposed to be. What are they called again? It's been a little while. Warp stick. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm going to have some tea. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. Okay. Hopefully you can see, but in that picture, it shows all the positions for the reed to go in, which explains a lot more because you wouldn't know it by just staring at that actual loom. <sighs> yeah, it only uses one reed, which is fine. And we're just going to do plain weave. I mean, if I'd like fancy stuff, then I can learn to use my foreshaft and that will do so much more things. Which is cool, but for my very first project, plain weave is good. But we're going to fancy that because we've got all the colours, so. <laughs> Put, place the reed in the rest position. Okay. So that's the middle one. The picture's got the Ashford brand there. So I know we've got it in the right. Okay, so. So. Okay, it's in. This is good. I really don't know how stable that is, but oh, there we go. Maybe it's supposed to rest a bit. Hmm, quite literally, it's in the rest and it's resting. Tie the warp yarn to the black. We'll get there in a minute. Tie the warp yarn to the back warp stick. Okay. Does it say what position it has to be in? Because in some photos, the warp sticks are facing in, in others, Throughout. Does it matter? Let's look at the bigger picture. In this instance, in the following page, it is indeed facing inward, but well, it's basically facing inward anyway. So, tilt that around a bit. It's a bit more biased. There we are. Let's have a look. Hmm. Okay, from what I see, I had it right before. It seems like the holes where the warp stick ties are is facing away, and then when you tie it, it comes back over seemingly. Do they seem to have longer ties than me? Is that an incorrect assumption? No, they do seem very long. Okay. Alright, so the reeds in the rest position. We've done that. Good, good, good. Tie the warp yarn to the back warp stick. Does it specify a specific knot? We're just tying it around. And I believe you start from this side and go to that side. I believe that's a thing because they're doing it in the diagram. Of course, the lady in the diagram's on that side of the table, but 
I'm a lefty, I'm just gonna do it this way. Okay, I've got six skeins of the pink. Oh, that's a bit of a mess. Oh well. Four of the blue, two of the gold. So I've come up with a sort of plaidy sort of scarf design. Because I've got like 960 meters of yarn here and I'd like to use some of it up. Where are my scissors? What was I saying? I'd like to use some of it up. That way it's a nice warm scarf and it's colourful and yeah. I actually ran the the pattern, the Yashum pattern through a plaid generator this morning. <laughs> and the results were good. It's just very eye bleeding. And it's like why not? Life's too short to have anything that's not eye bleeding. Alright, let me get rid of the skein ties. I'm going to be lazy and not bother to wind it into a ball, which no doubt will cause me strife later, but they're small skeins. We should be all right. Okay. Now, have we got any more? Do -do 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 -do. There we go. Don't cut yourself. There we go. Hello, is that attached to the yarn? Oh, of course it is. Okay. There we go, we've got a yarn end. Excellent. Cool, 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 cool. And I think we've got some. <laughs> Another tie. Is that another tie? Yeah, anyway, I'll tell you my idea while we're standing here waiting to find all the blooming ties. I tend to do a lot when I die. I think it helps the skein be more stable, which is good, but when you're trying to find it and it's everything's hot pink, it's just like, <laughs> it's like good luck. Wait, okay. Yeah, but my idea is I don't need this clamp. I don't know why I have it. Here we go. Is we do. Actually, first I should explain. I counted last night, and this particular read is the 7.5, which is good for 8 ply. So that's what we've got. And across it has, it's all about the slots and the heddles. So we've got 36 of each. Well, technically we have 37 heddles, but the whole idea is you put the yarn through the slot, and then you put it back through one of the heddles or the holes. So for that I want it to be even, so I thought, okay. Four pink, two blue, two pink, one gold, because I don't have very much, two pink, two blue, then the middle, which is ten pink, and then the pattern goes back sort of blue, pink, gold, pink, blue, pink, which I think would be nice and balanced and merry. And then I'll do the same, because this will be the warp, so that's the, the lengthwise way, and how you do the back that way is the weft. I can English, I promise. I'm just very excited. I've been up all night thinking about this going, yee! And is that another one? Yes, it is. Another tie. Okay, sneaky. And yeah, we'll just go until the yarn runs out. Probably the gold. <laughs> And hopefully we get a nice pattern. Okay. Right, 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 right. Right, that's on the floor. Because of course it is. Generally you would, from the lovely diagram, you have this lovely ball, lovely wool, and a lovely yarn ball, and it's so beautiful and organized. And I'm none of that. Right, now, what do they say? We got distracted, didn't we? Tell the warp down to the back warp stitch. Does it say what direction? Are we like... Is the yarn sort of draping this way? Is it going this way? Like, what does that next diagram look like? Uh-huh. Okay, so we tie it. 
so we tie it like a bit like that I think let's see the diagram I don't it doesn't really say if you have to tie it securely or tie it tight or whatever you have to do you have to get this off later so I'm just going to do a simple knotty boo and if it comes undone later then we'll just go back and redo a little bit yeah we'll just play it out okay so it's facing that way that seems to be the right thing to do right and now we need our threading hook which is a very exciting piece of machinery we get to use this now so we've got it tied to the warp stick the back warp stick to be specific Push the threading hook through the first slot. Okay. Catch the arm with the hook. Pull a loop through the slot. Okay, our first slot is here. I'm going to count that pedal as the extra one, I think. Unless I count that one as the extra one. I'm not sure how this is going to go yet, but we're ignoring one of them. <sighs> we'll just see how it ends up when we have to do the next bits. Okay, so we push it through. We catch it like that so I've essentially hooked a loop and we pull it through now we're going over the back rail I think we are for the first one you have to alternate see there we've got this lovely loop that's coming through and it's streaming freely the other end is affixed to our warp stick and so we just pull 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 we may have to loosen some of the yarn <laughs> okay hold on it's okay, it's the first stitch, as it were. I've just got to loosen this up a bit more. Which is probably why you do wind it into a ball and be sensible about it. And it's just like, oh, let's have some strife and chaos. At least with this video, you can learn what not to do. <laughs> so that's probably more helpful than anything else. Okay, that should loosen it for a bit. No, let's do a bit more, actually. The whole point is that your tension is very even, hence why you have it in a nice ball, in a nice yarn ball. But, bugger that. Okay, go over there. Right, we've got several meters. Okay, now, darling, you're still attached to the warp stick? Yes, yes, yes. We've got our beautiful hot pink lip. It's coming, 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 coming. And we pop it round there. It's hooked onto our, not very tightly. It's supposed to be tight. Absolutely no idea. Let's see. Take the yarn to the warping pad and loop it over. Well, that's what we've done. It's just, it's very loose. It's just fine. We'll be fine. Actually, can I sit you back a bit further? Thank you. You get an extra centimeter. Okay, okay. So we've done, as it were, our first slot. Our first loop has fixed around our lovely warping chair. Now, Push the threading hook through the next slot. Oh, I thought... Did I do it wrong? Oh no. Did I do it wrong? Because now they're saying take it over the back rail. Or oh, over the back loop stick. Wait. Oh no, I did it under the back loop stick. We're fine. Aren't you as the warp stick supposed to be over here though? How are you supposed to maintain tension? I don't understand. Try and keep tension even across the loop. Well, <laughs> doing me best. Under the back warp stick. Well, because it seems it's supposed to be dreadfully under tension. And. We're supposed to tighten, tighten, tighten so it's sitting like that. Is that correct? Okay. So that's under the warp stick. Oh. 
and as suspected, our little naughty boo is trying to make a break for it. There we go. We did a better knot. Okay, because these nylon ties are very bouncy. It does not want to sit in. But apparently it's supposed to be. Maybe with the more tension it will. Because currently it's just it's just laying out there. Okay. Right, so presumably, technically, that was under the back warp stick. Now for the next one, our abominably loose tension. We got it through it first slot, yeah? Okay. Then we put it through the second slot. We catch it. We pull, 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 pull. Ye gods. I don't know how well this is going, guys. But I think we've done it. Okay. Oh, for the next one. Okay, so I see. With the more... Uh, if your warp stick was inclined to fall inwards, you could see how it would be easier. So... We've done two slots, and they're fine. And then for this next one, you push the yarn. Oop, this is a bit wobbly. Here we go, we'll use our hands. Under the warp stick to gather the next loop. Oh no, don't go under the next slot. Okay. Try to keep your tension even. Well, good luck with that, mate. Okay, we've done three. I had a thought, and now it's just, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone forever. Never to return. Oh, yes, that was my point. Now, we've done three slots. And our edging is four pink slots. So one more. Yeah, see, so we got one, two, and three. We push that through the slot, and this time we take it over the back warp bar. Back warp stick. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. We're taking it over the back side. Oh, with a knot. This is why you ball things up nicely. Okay, so we'll press those down neatly. And we're going to space these out a bit because I can see that they're trying to constrict our poor back warp stick there. But with the more slots filled, it is starting to creep in to this way, so that's good. Because the nylon ties are very new. Okay, now let's count them. Where'd I put my sticky boot? There we go. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, and four. Yes, good. Okay, so <laughs> this feels like progress. <laughs> put my pen there. Okay, so I'll mark that off. Right, we've done our four. Our first four. The next is two blue. And I think while we're at it, we'll um, unstain the gold as well. That way, we can just keep going. From what I estimated with my math very late last night, we should be able to do this. It'll take about, depends, about 130 meters to do this warp or what, which is cool. Maybe a bit less. I did have to move the table out quite a bit so I can fit it because later I have to fit behind it. I've estimated that given that I am solo crafter, I am going to have to wind my own warp alone. I won't have friends to help. So, and with that in mind, and I do recommend it in the booklet, is to look up the Ashford site and look at their instructions for solo warping, which is all about maintaining the tension of the warp while you wind it onto the back bar. So, that's perfectly fine. But yeah, if you didn't have a helpful friend there, you'd be able to do it. Which is what I'm going to attempt today. As long as I can keep my tension okay. Keep 
track of which ones are over and under. I think, oh no, you can quite easily see it though. First one was under, over, under, over. So the first blue will be under. Okay, good to know. And we just add a new colour precisely the same way as the pink. We just tie it onto our back warp stick. A colourful little chunk of whatever the heck this is. Stop on. Okay, which we could not. Alright, may have to count these again. Alright, under, over. Don't really seem to be on my three. Oh, that's. <laughs> that hasn't been lived yet. Okay. I need to tie you off, don't I? Hmm. 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 Yes, that would make sense, Brit. Okay. Right, let me just read ahead because I'm pretty sure I read something last night about this. Like, when changing colours, you tie up the old colour and you tie on the new colour, which. Course. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, what you said. No. Ah, yes, to change colors. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It was on the same page. <laughs> To change colours, tie one colour onto the back warp stick. Tie the new colour onto the back warp stick. Check attention. And then after, this is the sentence that confused me, because it says, check attention, and it says, cut the last thread at the back of the loom and tie it to the... And of course, now I see that's referring, when you've finished doing your warp, you cut off the last of it and tie the last thread to the warp stick, rather than change colours and then cut. What? <laughs> wasn't quite making any sense. All right, now we've got our hooky doobie. Oh yeah, there we are, I'm just blending in. Just gotta clean up our scraps. Now, under, over, under, over. First blue is under, okay. Okay, now we've got all the, yep. One, two, three, four, yep. I don't want to miss one, that would be bad. Okay, so we'll just hook that under the warp stick. Just guide that back a bit and give it a nice little tug, I think. So it's supposed to be maintaining tension, but it seems a bit difficult. Right. This one is hooked over, so I've taken it over the bar. Will you stop going into your brethren, please? Yeah. I was supposed to tie off that last colour, wasn't I? <laughs> Whoops. I talked about it, and I forgot about it, and now the gold is trying to attack me. Okay. Alright, let's go around the loop, and the blue is knotting. The blue is really knotting. Jesus, okay. Well, that was fun. <sighs> Alright, that's nice and tight. Not firm, rather, it's even. It's supposed to be even tension. So, I'll give that a bit of length. Oh no, you're just going to fall. Okay, that's fine. I was thinking, oh, why is the pink loose? And she's like, well, Brit, have you tied it off yet? No? Okay. Alright, so. I think you're supposed to be the other side of that tile. Thank you. Alright, we'll do the same for this one. Wait, we'll just make sure it's compressed with its brethren. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay. Frankly, I was talking to the loom then, but I think I'm also talking to myself. Just sort of going, we good? <laughs> 
Okay, we'll just leave it a little slack there, that won't hurt. We tie off this colour. No, no, we tie that off a bit better. Thank you. but it's even which is the point okay so how are we feeling right we've got two blue so over under over under over under next one's over what do we have next pink oh, of course Alright, we've had two blue, we're gonna have two pink. No, it's not working out, is it? Can you tie a blue and not? There we are, next one. And now it's over because it's the seven. What? Under, over, over, under, over. Oh no, it's under. Wait, wait. Am I doing this right? Under, over, under, over, under, over. And this next one's hooked under. Okay. At least somebody knows what they're doing here. Right, that's the next one. So we go under. Into the next slot. Okay, after this loop, we should have seven slots filled. And how's that tension? Yeah, a bit of yank. See how we're going. Yeah, it's okay. And then we take that loop. Over. Oh, and we pause because there's a knot. There we go. And then we get to tie that off again and fix another knot. Okay. Okay, how are we feeling? A little bit bouncy? That's good. Oh, sorry, Logan. Alright, we should have eight on the back. What's he doodle? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, we've covered one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right, that's three colors walked on. Well, as it were, three color sequences. Right, we need one gold. We don't have very much, so what we're using is um, in small quantities. Is this an over one or is it an under? It's a good thing I'm not warping anything bigger. I'd be absolutely lost in confusion. Right, there we are. Give it tight. Under, over. Yep. Eh, eh. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So it's an under. Okay. <laughs> Small tools of two. You'd think I'd be able to keep track, but no. Okay. Come on. Go under the warp bar, please. Under, over, 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 under,
under the warp bar. Come up so I can hook you. You're very far away. That looks good. Let's tighten up our tension a little. You can do it. Okay. All right, deposit you back over there. That was an under. We remember that. Right, two pink. Got thirty six slots to fill. How many have we done? Four, two, two, that's eight. Is that nine? Oh, it's not bad. Quarter of the way through. Okay, you're gonna tangle? You're gonna be stubborn. We need two pink for the mirror. Okay. That one was under, so the next one is over. Okay. <sighs> is it easier to remember odd numbers are under? I think it is. Okay, so we've done nine, so ten is even thus far. Therefore, is over. Good. Right, slot in the next one. We haven't missed any, which is good. I was worried that I would, but seems good for now. Have we tangled? No, no, we're good. We're good. Just worried I twisted the warp loop. That would be. Oh my god. Hook has just catapulted itself behind the camera. Give me a minute. Ow, damn it. Oh, nope, that's not good either. Okay, we're fine. Right, we've done one. Goosey goosey, but it's okay. That's okay. Now, done one over. Yeah. Next slot is 11, which is odd. Which is, oh my god, it's getting. Gonna hook it in such a way you can get it under and then actually hook it. There we go. Come, 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 come. Beautiful, no catapulting. Are you all the way under there? Okay, how's that? Right, four, two, two, one, two. <laughs> good, how's the tension? That seems pretty good. Hopefully, better tension is something I can learn as I go along with subsequent knitting projects, or rather weaving projects, although knitting as well, it's always important to have good tension. Two blue. <sighs>
Alright, it's two blue, and then we do the middle, which is ten pink. Oh, cool. We're approaching the middle. Good. We tie on the next color, which is of course blue. We've got one of the ties kind of in the middle of the warp stick, so I might loop this first blue loop on this side and then do the other one on the other side. Or maybe just squidge these along. We're taking up quite a bit of real estate, which good, we're approaching the middle, so that's a good sign. Right, now, is this an even row? Let's go one. Uh oh. We might actually have a problem. Is that the second loop? It's looped. In between slots. Okay, well given that I'm doing colour changes that's something I can just undo. I'll undo the first knot and just try and get... I'll do that later. I haven't suffered that anywhere else. It's just clearly with the first couple of slots I did something. <laughs> okay, let's count it out again. Over, oh, oh no, under, over, how many is it? Four, eight, seven, nine, eleven, twelve, six, three, one. Oh yeah, very clearly you can see that. That's a twelfth, isn't it? Count again. Four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So first blue is number twelve. Good, 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 good. Okay, we'll get through the slot. It's 12, so it's an over. And we'll see if we've got enough untangle wool to go over. There we are, very neat. Next one is number 13, and it's an under. We'll just double check that it's going to play ball. You can undo. Okay. Now, if you just kindly shoot down the line a bit further, please. Yeah, that might about do it. Let's give it a go. 13 is under. Okay. And we're still on this side of the warp bar. Okay. Ugh. Almost did it. Yep. Alright, we're pulling that next loop through. It's an under, so it goes under the warp stick bar thing. Oop, the knots are coming. <laughs> Wait, we might have to put that down. No, I didn't think we'd make it, and we didn't. Try it and see. If not, well, 
keep on Oh yeah, it ain't gonna do it. Okay. Alright, I think the simplest thing is to basically uh, just undo the last slot. Sadly undo all of that. Take it off the loom. Try and figure out this knot. And then we can move on. I really, really thought the hard bits were going to have to do with the loom, not the yarn. So I apologize for the delay. But um, it's a very real life problem, I think. Laziness breeds knots in skeins left to their own devices. Put it back onto the loom. Okay. <sighs> All right. Oh, good, 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 good. Back over there. Let's try this again. Oh, we got some fuzz. Come here. Mm. The fuzz reminds me it's a, very important that you use a good wool that can withstand tension when weaving, from what I've read. Because um, otherwise if you get something very softly spun, or otherwise very delicate, it might, well it just won't cope. But this is good Australian yarn, so it should be fine. It's commercially spun, so there aren't, there shouldn't be an issue there. Now, we're back to where we were before, so with two blue. Now, is it 12? Was this, was this the 12th slot? Let's go, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, this is 12, so it's over. Okay, let's give this another bit. Right, loop over the chair. Come back round, tighten up your tension a bit. And then we've got the 13th slot. So we go, yep, we hook it, we bring it on through. We pray that there aren't any knots waiting for us. Because they're genuinely irritating at this point in time. All right, we'll firm that up while we hang on. That needs to be a bit tight. So when we tie that off, we'll just tighten that up a bit because we can see it's a bit more bouncier. Phew! Oh, oh my god. The scissors are out to get me today. All right, tie. Tie, forget about it. What color now? Oh good, we get a long stretch now. We've got to tie the pink back on and do 10 slots. So we'll have to keep track. Now, the last blue was 13. Oh, keeping nice. No knots for you, please. I'm gonna tie this back on. So that was 13, so under. So this is 14, which is over. Good to know. Okay. Oh, 
it's definitely good practice for tying on a wall pull, the different colours. Now, it's 14, so it's over. Right. Let me pop it through the slot. Which, which way are you supposed to be? Are you messing with me? Is this what you're doing? Here we go. Numero uno. Now, that was over. We should probably keep count. We've done one. Don't come around for 15. Oh, okay. I'm starting to think maybe a knitting needle, maybe a crochet hook would be good and just hook it under the back rail. So, or warp stick rather. So we can yank that through without issue. Okay, we've done two. We've done two. Don't know where my grammar is today. Probably wandered off with the knot and the blue skein. It was over, under, over, so another under, yeah? Oh. Alright, at this point we've basically approach the halfway mark across the warp stick so I'm just gonna plop that down and move it across because there is that nylon tie in the way and it's a bit irritating to be honest I understand why it's there it's just irritating All right, that was four wasn't it one two three four we just did an under, as we can see. Next one's an over. All right, we got it in the right slot. Good. Oh, we had a wee tangle. And we got another one forming. Oh. Okay, it's definitely that other yarn end. That's the problem today. There we are, that's a bit better. Okay, it should unfurl a bit better. For the next little bit. Okay, good, good, good. Right, now where were we? We were tangled, weren't we? Right, well, how about we just yank you back through the slot, because now you were an over, so put you back through the right slot. It's a good thing about making mistakes, you know how to undo something and go back and redo, and you learn to recognise patterns, which is always a positive. Now, I think I was five or six, I can't quite remember five good now next one's an under because we just did an over yeah we got enough yarn and i think we have to go and fill some more what was that Get a little bit more. I think we've got four more slots to do in the pink. Let's go back and count again. Okay. Now, do we 
just do an under. Trifle confused. Where are we coming from? Ah, yes, we just did an under. I can see it. Okay, so we do an over. Put in the slot next. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Trusty friend chair. It's looking good. Oops, slight tangle. That was an over, wasn't it? Let me count the slots. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've done seven. Next one's an under, isn't it? Just did an under that was number eight. Was it number eight? Man, I hope it was number eight. <laughs> and I hope we're keeping track of this, but we should we should be fine. See that was an under, so now we go over into the next slot. This round chair. Yeah, that was an over. Let me count again. And that was the one I just did. That was an over. Hey, we're getting it right. Good. How many how many pegs do we have though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Really? Last one's then under, and then we're done with the pegs, aren't we? Come on, hook it. Maybe you need like three hands for this. Okay, last loop of pink for a bit. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We got a tangle. Right. Let's go back again. Now, last one, number 10, was an under. So we'll pop that back through the slot. Oh, I could have left it on this side of the warp stick. But I didn't. Okay. There we are. All right, we'll just count to be sure. Let's not tie anything off in haste. Make sure we haven't done any mistakes like we did over there. We count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Beautiful. We've done our ten. Pink didn't tangle. And now we've got to go back to the blue. <laughs> My favorite color now. <laughs> I think we do blue for two. Yep, blue for two. I might try to find the other end, to be honest with you. Getting a bit sick of that 
Come with me. Alright, found the other end, so I'll try to wind off enough for two loops on our warp. And just thoroughly ignore the other end. Ugh, some skeins are like this, you can look at it and it tangles. And others are perfectly fine, even if your cat rolls on top of it. Which has been known to happen in this household. Yeah, some days are just... <laughs> Alright, this is going a lot easier. Thank you, other end. Okay, kick you off over here. Right, that's plenty, that's good. No, not. No. Not you. There we go. Right, we're putting that on for two. Now, the last pink was a. was an under, wasn't it? Let's count them again. Four, eight, nine, eleven, thirteen, twenty three. First blue is 24, and thusly is an over. Alright, get the right slot. I really, really, really hope I'm not missing any slots right now. That would be a bit upsetting. Okay, the no eye looks good. I think we've covered all of them. It's not like it's a big, like, shawl or blanket loom where it's so many slots and you just happen to miss one. So that's good. Okay, second blue is an under. Thread it through over the good friend chair. <sighs> Which I'm actually pleased to see is working. I mean, one person on the internet saying that, hey, use a chair as your warping peg. It's like, well, it's actually legit. All right, good end. I'm putting you over there. We should really tie it to something, actually. Yep, nope, that wasn't a loop at all. Here we go. Now, second blue was an under, so first, first pink is an over. But first, I'm gonna find a knitting needle. <laughs> And we're going to tie the good end of blue to it. Oh, there we are. There we go. We don't lose it. It doesn't get tangled. <sighs> we can just ignore it. All right, pink again. Wait, check. Let's double check. Two pink. pink and the first is an over. Okay. Oh my god. Two pink. Get off and off yarn. And a bit extra just in case. It's probably not helping my tension. Now, first pink is over. Find the slot. Nope. And prevent the tangle. There we are. 
Loop the rivet here. And then second through the slot is an under. When I can loop it, it'll be an under. There we go. There we are, beautiful. Okay, how's our tension going again? Is that doing okay? Yeah, yeah. It seems, uh, it is, at the very least, it seems consistent, so that's what I want to hear. Or rather, see. Okay, tea break. <sighs> That's looking good. Oh. I wonder what time it is. I started around 10. Uh. Oh, true. <laughs> it's only 11.37. Okay. Oh, that's all right. I figured I'd give myself six hours and see what I could do. And what I'm doing is good. It's working out. All right, we've got our second and our last gold of this project. And I think we'll hook the, the good end up to that same knitting needle as well, just so we can keep track of it. I've got all this wool on the floor. Now, it's not over again, isn't it? Because first pink was over, second pink was under. Okay, good. It's tied on nicely. Good. Trusty hook. You are on nicely, aren't you? Yes, good. Okay. Uh. No, no, don't, don't grab too much. Tension's a bit wonky on that one. Come on, come back. How's that? Yeah, that's better. I really don't think these colours go well at all, but I am excited to use them nonetheless and I think that the end result is going to be very eye-catching and frankly I'm just very excited to be doing this anyway it's um my first warp <laughs> And I'm very glad to be sharing it with you guys. I think that's a lovely thing to do. Oh. I go to all the trouble to look this up and then I trip on it. Right, one gold out of the way. That was over. Next one from now on, the first one of every color is an under because we've gone back to even numbers again. Or rather odd numbers again. Now, I need two pink. Yeah, two pink. Okay, good. We're actually getting to the end of this game because we I do have the majority of it is pink, so... And this is all I've got left of the first. So it might be enough to get me through, what, the next six rows? I might have to break out another one, which isn't a bother. It's just also... Um, Interesting to see what I have to do and how much yarn it uses. Okay. Right. Oh, what do I stand on? Oh, it's just a blue. We're fine. Do I need another blue in this? Yes, yes, we've got another blue. That's okay. I was just thinking we've only got three thus far, so I was wondering if I'd missed it. Alright, now the first one of every 
every new colour is an under. So I'll pull that through. And the second one is an over. Oh, oh. Is technically an under, so it's just the first round. Well, hopefully, it works out because it's gonna yank it through regardless. Oh, we got a knot. Okay, how are we hanging? We're good. Oh no, no, that looks fine, that's fine. Now I did put you through the wrap one. Are they meant to be that crossed over? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That looks, that looks right. <gasps> no, I did it again. The loopy thing. I don't even know how. Maybe it was something to do with the first tie on that just sort of went. Okay, okay, we gotta undo the last loop. Okay. Nope, don't hook on the cog. Oh, we've got a lovely knot in there as well. Ooh. I don't know what I did. Okay, we'll just undo the last two and then we'll go back around. Maybe, because I kind of position the knot, as it were, on this side of the warp stick. Maybe I should be positioning on that side so when you hook the yarn under, it actually goes under, right? Okay, we'll give that a go. I'll just spin around and... Because it doesn't really say, does it? I'll just chop you off. You're looking a bit unsteady as it were, so just chop you off and give it another go. Okay, now it's always over the back beam, that's the way it's been. So we'll deliberately tie it this way. See if that makes any sort of difference because that might have been the problem with the second slot over there is that the knot wasn't on this side. So hence when I went to scoop it under or over it just sort of went, let's be a dick about it. I need to figure out how to fix that. Or maybe I've crossed it or something. But the rest of it is perfectly fine. It looks perfectly legit. So it's just a problem I have to figure out myself. Okay. Now I've forgotten. Oh no, first one is always on, but that's that's because we changed back somehow. We're... Okay, so the yarn is deliberately scooped under the back warp stick now. <sighs> when I can scoop it. Hello, come on. Come. There we are. Okay, so we put that through the right slot. There we are. Pull through. Well, it's looking fine thus far. Let's give it a go. Except for when we have a gigantic knot problem. Yeah, take it back again. Come on. Oh, now it's playing with the ties. Okay. Okay, don't pull it too far. We want to keep it. <sighs> See, we'll turn you back over. We should be tight tighter for a start. Okay, we hook it through under. Okay. Pop it through. Okay, let's see how this goes. Right, 
we've popped it through. And that was under. And now we're going to try the over and see if there's something we missed. Oh, you've got a great big knot in the middle of that. Take it back. Alright, so in the middle of this game we've encountered a knot and frankly I'm not content to leave it. Like, at all. So... I'll just have a very long tie-off thread here. I'm sure there's ways you could do it, but it's just like, how about... Since we're tying everything to the back warp stick anyway, how about we just... Hold it off. Okay. Right, now we tie it anew. Uh, that way it's just nice and neat. Right, so not solved. We put it over the watch stick because it's a second. Am I doing something wrong there? I feel like the loose thread is always on my right. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, finally, we're getting there. I'm enjoying that we're, well, not enjoying, I'm enduring that we're encountering problems, so maybe this could help somebody. Maybe it can help you. In the future, if you come across these issues, you sort of go, aha! Someone stupid already did this. <laughs> we can fix it. Right, that seems to have solved it. There's no weird loop at the back. I must have just done something. I'm not 100% sure what, but that's okay. Right, now that's two done. Okay, now we got our we got to get our good friend Blue out. <laughs> Do I particularly enjoy our good friend Blue? Not exactly, but let's uh, see what it can do. Now, we've, we've done two, so we're going to have to tie the knot to the back of the warp stick again. I really don't know how they're doing it here, if they're tying it back or not, because in the first diagram they definitely weren't. Although, on this one, they kind of seem kind of seem to be on the bottom of the warp stick. It's just like, well, it's not exactly helpful. Right, that's to the back. And it's draped over the back beam, as it seems to be in the pictures. Hopefully I'm not getting that wrong. Let's have another look. Yes, it's very specifically. It's hard to see, but it's definitely draped over the back beam. So the free yarn is just hanging over that. It's not under it, it's not twirled around it. Just there. Right, it's tied on. Seemingly it's taken up some of the pink with it. Stay in your lane. Um, <laughs> Okay, this is good. We've got a lot of blue left, obviously, because we haven't used very much, like eight slots worth, really, is what we'll have total. Okay. And the pink's all but diminished, so we'll see if what's left of the pink can do the final four slots. Hopefully so. Now, it's the first one that's under, isn't it? Yeah, because we tied it at the back. Okay, now the chair's still going strong. Thank you, chair. Make sure that knot's nice and secure. Pop that through. I swear, the longer this goes on, the more difficult it is to pop that yarn under so you can hook it. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Right, that was first under, and then the second one is because it's only two blue. I was just 
double checking in case I had something crazy. Like six blue. Oh, okay. That was oddly loose tension. I think maybe I pulled a bit too much on the hook. Oh, that's good. Okay, scissors. Right, we'll replace the blue onto the needle, that way we keep track of it. <sighs> Not feeling very friendly towards our good friend blue at the moment. Okay, and now we're down to our last colour change, which is for blue, sorry, not for blue, for pink to end it. And then we get to move on to other things. Oh no, we got to go back and fix that pink at the beginning. Still don't know what I did wrong. How irksome. wind off some yarn and then hopefully I just get these last four slots done. Okay. Alright, that's four and we're starting off with an under row again. Pop that on. Oop, there's a spot where the dye didn't penetrate. Yep, let's not include that in the final product, shall we? There can be excess. There we go, over you go. Right, it's at the back. We've got to do another under. Get into slot. Oh, coconut. One under. Done. Next slot. One over. Also done. Why is the tension not tight? Oh, dangle. Right, second last. Oh my god, I'm so excited. It's been so long. No, don't tangle that. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe with this hooky thing, maybe I hooked, hooked a wrong strand at the beginning. Maybe that was the issue. Ooh, food for thought. Maybe I'll Google later and I'll find out what the issue was. So right now I'm baffled. Under, over, under, over. Last one is an over. Which is fitting. The first one was an under, so that's good. We've got an even number. Which probably means we've done it correctly across the great expanse that has been warping this land. <sighs> okay. Right, well, who has the has the tension? Tension good. Right, that's the good end, so we'll just pop you there. Now, I'm not sure if all these yarn ends actually stay on for the entire project, but I think at the end you cut them off. So, which isn't to say in the next step we have to like move all of these ends onto something else like the back rail. I hope not. That would be really, really tedious. Okay, so we're done. We've done all our colours. We'll tick it off. And we've got all the beauties here. 
It's had a pink criss crossing, so I'm wondering why. What's happening? No, that looks fine. All right, we're gonna go fix that one. Not a hundred percent sure what's wrong though, because it's hooked. Um, it seems. Hundred percent sure, but by the by the direction of it, we're gonna have to just reverse warp this. God, yeah, we should have just gone back and started again. <laughs> okay, by the looks of things, there should be two strands in each slot, right? Okay. Not a problem. Um, it seems though that I did something and the first, one of the strands from the first slot is actually in the second. Or it just crosses over weirdly. Not sure, not sure. So where's our gold in this scenario? Ah, it's over there. We're fine. Let's have a look. We'll just push you guys. So we've got two. We've got two. I did something wrong. It seems like the first two slots. I don't know how to put this. I think I might have to redo the first two slots. Do you think we can redo it? Oh! I think we can redo it. Guys, I think we can fix this. I think we can fix it. Okay, we'll just, because we've done all this color change, I think we just have to take the first four loops off. We'll have to do it carefully, but I think we can do it. So um, on the chair, I'll just move everything up except those four. And then when I'm loop warping, I'll just loop. Warp it under and be very careful about it. Okay, we can fix this. <sighs> as long as this isn't, you know, super intersected. No, it should be fine. All right, we'll move it up. And then I'll just isolate the first four because those are the problematic ones. And we'll just use the new pink yarn. I, I think with the little mistake, the little loopy bit there, I'm going to need a bit more, so oh, this feels very tense. Okay. Uh, farewell. Yeah, that's the first four, so we'll just go. Uh, that didn't feel good. That didn't feel good at all. Oh, it knocked something off the table. Okay. All right, so you can see how these ones are slack now. I've cut them. There, obviously, and so now our warp starts with blue. Now, what we've got to do is go back and fix the problem. Okay, now I'm assuming now the first slot it started on an under, correct? Because the second one in the booklet isn't over. So, oh, we got another bit of pink. Oh, I'm so glad I can fix this. I was really worried for a minute there. Okay. So we'll just tie it nice and firmly on the back of our hop stick. And then we'll pull out some yarn. I feel like I'm stepping on the blue again. Am I? That's all secure actually. Just put both skeins over there. <sighs> I still don't know what the problem was, but maybe I failed to catch something correctly. Maybe it didn't go in the direction it was supposed to. 
maybe if you go if you don't alternate under and over maybe that's what happens you get a loop maybe after this project's done i'll try and do that deliberately and see if we get the loop and if we get the loop then we know what's wrong correct but for now i'm not gonna like <laughs> test that hypothesis i just want to get my walk finished all right that should be enough yarn right it's over the back beam we're gonna take our trusty hook I would almost go on the other side of the table, but she's like, no, I've been threading it from this way, so. Right, we're going in our first slot. We are mm, hooking the yarn. Hooking my yarn. Oh, Houston. Houston, did we miscalculate? Houston, we may have done. I forgot. I was just going to loop it, but then you loop it and I can't. Unless I loop it over. Right. Bear with me. Because it's just like all the current loops are on the top of the chair rather than... And we're not adding this one on the top. It will, I'll just have to loop it over so it goes under. Right. That was... <laughs> uh, but then we've still got this bit over. Mm. Mm. God damn it, Houston. I thought we had a solution here. Hmm. Okay, take it back. It's not going to work. Because that bit isn't going to go under the way we need it to. I feel almost like we need another chair over there. But there isn't room for it. Unless we unbolt and shuffle. That would mess with the tension. Well, currently we're messing with the tension anyway. Because if we move this across and put another chair, then we could just loop it and then we could just stick it back across. I'm reluctant to take the current warp off the chair just so I can do four loops. That would be bad. Although, would that even... Even if I put the other chair... With that because you guys are just lying on top of each other aren't you so what does that mean for this we just need you to be under i really hope this doesn't end with me pulling it all the way up over the chair <laughs> disturbingly that's the best that's the best thing i've got that's the best idea. All right, we'll let it play out. Um, make sure we don't twist it. And then we're just going to have to lift up the chair legs and just pull it up. Just inch them up. This is not an ideal solution, but it is one that works. Ow, damn it. Well, I say works while I hit my head. <sighs> okay. Oh, the back leg is a bit of a problem. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> right, we did. Oh, bugger. I keep forgetting the table's a bit wobbly. just say not my greatest moment to ever <laughs> to ever be a moment that's okay right that one was under 
this one needs to come over. Now, do we get a horrible loopy boo? No. Okay, now, what do we do? We go under. And we have to make sure we go under the first loop because we are quite literally reverse engineering. Okay, make sure I don't twist the loop. And back under the table we go. Oh, don't pull on the other loops. Okay, and then we bring it up over the first loop, and then we gotta tighten it and make sure it's okay. Okay. This isn't chaotic and crazy or anything. Alright, that's tighter. Now, 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 now. Okay, so. Hmm. Shit, I lost track of me loops. Okay. See, that's fine. That's fine. They have two. They have two. The first two slots have two. I think I've just twisted the first loops around the chair, though. For a second loop, for a second loop, for a second loop. Come on, come on. Just, you know, be chill, dude. Can you be chill? I don't believe this, this uh, walk can be at all chill. All right, for the third one, we go under. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we looped it. Okay, now, like the other ones, we've got a sort of, I've got to angle it so it's under the warp because, you know, and not hook anything else. Nothing good. That's what you did, Britt. Nothing good. Why is it hooked round the loop? How? How? Okay, see, that's entirely separate. I'm just trying to do the third slot. Oh, thank God. Okay, now, I think you've twisted, so... Which side is which now? Ah, there we go. Okay. So, we need to go under and beside the two new threads going this way. And before the loop of existing blue. Okay, so we're coming under. Only one more slot to go after this. We can do it. We can do it. That's the wrong one to pull, Brit. Okay, good. Okay, and we've got, mm, for some reason, the other warp has decided that it's fallen down the chair. Thanks, warp. If you could just isolate yourself. Oh. Okay, so we'll just pull the excess. Round, 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 round. So. <sighs> okay. Oh no! Don't hook the table. Round, 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 round. <sighs> now we're good. We've got two in each slot. Last one, and then I'm going to sit on the floor and cry. Okay. Is the fourth one under or over? 
it's um it's over isn't it just under and then over and then that one was under I think so this one's over and I hope this makes sense Okay, and then we just gently go across. No, we're not, no, no, don't hook. All right, gently pull it so it's across the new stitches. So I've twisted it though, I'm going to untwist it. Make sure we're not catching anything else. Yeah, there we go. Okay. No, no, we've still twisted it. Which end is the pulley end? Thank you. <sighs> the Lord is testing me today. You're the pulley end. Okay. Look, come here. I need you to stop twisting. Okay. It's getting very annoying. Okay, so you're all good. Untwist, 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 untwist. Amen. It's fine up to a point and then it twists beyond recognition. It really gets my goat. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. No, no, don't don't actually join that with the rest of the way. Okay. Alright, one to the left, one When you clicked on this video today, you didn't fall, expect a full mental breakdown. <sighs> but I suspect that's what we're getting anyway. <laughs> okay, we're going to join it up with the rest of the loom and probably tighten that last loop quite a bit. And hopefully we get something that's fairly consistent. <sighs> Woo! Now, does that look okay? Hopefully they're crossing in the right direction. I was a bit worried that these are just kind of straight without the cross, but these um, last four, like the edges, just seem to go that way, where the middle crosses like a highway. So, oh god, I need a minute. Oh. All right, let's double check. Yep, there's no nasty loopy. Um, let's just check that there's two threads in each. Two, 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 and you can see that it's sort of up, sort of down, up, down, up. So under, over, under, over. Good. You can tell by the positions of the threads. Good. I don't want to have to go back and do the chair thing again. It's really uh, not a good look. Ta da We did it. And hopefully we got all our threads not crossed horrifically. Okay, tea break. Oh, something fell over. Oh god. 
<sighs> right, that should be our walk finished. Um, we put all the colours on, we've, they're beautiful, they look great. We've battled with knots in the skeins, mostly because I'm lazy. Okay, what's the next step? 